any jinn, if he or she wants to, can appear in front of any human, and that is a power that they have that we do not have. And we'll talk about some of the differences between men and jinn, and the differences in power and in intellect. So, there is no original shape of the jinn, rather, and this goes back to another point, a lot of cultural legends are actually based upon the jinn. A lot of things that we hear about, stories and whatnot, they actually come from the jinn. So this notion of the young kids know what I'm talking about, shapeshifters. An entity that can go into any shape it wants. This is, it wants to. This is very common in many legends, in many civilizations. It's not just in Western culture. It's not just X-Men and that woman that can shapeshift or whatever, right? Not that you should watch that, but anyway. So uh, it's not just in this modern culture. Every civilization has this type of notion of a shapeshifter. Where does it come from? It is the jinn. The jinns are the real shapeshifters. The jinns can appear in any shape and fashion and form. They can also appear in the form of dead people. And we know this from the hadith of the Prophet wasallam when he said, if you see me in a dream, then know that you have really seen me because the shayateen cannot duplicate my form. What does that mean? They can duplicate anybody else's form. Anybody else's form, they can duplicate it. Right? So, this leads us to a very important point, and that is that we, and youngsters especially, pay attention to this. We don't believe in ghosts. We believe in jinns. We don't believe in ghosts. A human ghost, we don't believe in that. They will come back and haunt people. No, that doesn't happen. The, the, the soul goes to the other world. The soul does not return to this world that we live in. The soul of the human goes to the barzakh. The soul of the human does not and cannot return to alam al-dunya. It cannot come back to the world of the wakeful man. Maybe for the sleeping man. That's another question, we're not going to get into it now. But the wakeful state that we're in right now, the souls of the dead never ever come back to. So, how then do we explain people, you know, in, in seances and, 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 you know, they go to the, the magician or they go to the, uh, the people of the occult and all of a sudden the shape of the dead man comes up and talks. This is all the jinn. It's all the jinn. Never does an actual human soul come back to this world because it's gone now. Khalas, Allah says, Kullu One time you will taste it, that's it, you're going to move on. So therefore the jinns can come back and pretend to be human souls. Pretend to look in the shape of other people. We also learn from the seerah that the jinns can come and pretend to be human. They can intermingle with human and humans won't even know that they're jinns. We learn this from the seerah. So many incidents from the seerah. For example, of the incidents is the night of the assassination of the Prophet When the elite of the Quraysh gathered together and they decided finally once and for all we're going to assassinate the Prophet What happens? There was a knock on the door and an old man from, you know, from the areas of Najd, from one of the chieftains, he looked like a, the chieftains of one of the upper tribes, northern tribes, right? And he gave the story that they believed him to be one of the elite. And it turns out that this was Iblis himself. And he was the one who told them the plot of, why don't you send one man from every tribe to simultaneously attack so that it's complete chaos and no one person can be blamed. You know the story of the Hijrah, right? Where did it come from, Iblis? How did it get to their minds? He pretended to be an old man from that region, right? We also learn uh, in the Battle of Badr that Allah Azza wa very explicitly says that Iblis came and pretended to basically Iblis came in the form of somebody who was to become a Sahabi, Suraqa ibn Malik. So Suraqa, just because Iblis comes in your form doesn't mean you're a bad person. Suraqa became a Muslim. Suraqa became a Sahabi. At this point in time, now if you remember back in two years ago when we did this in the seerah, inshallah all of you fully remember, we have the note taker here as well, that why were they scared about Suraqa ibn Malik? Who can tell me? Asif, who can tell me? <laughs> who can tell us? Okay. Why were they worried about Suraqa ibn Malik and his tribe when they went to Badr? There was a feud between the people of Quraysh and the people of uh, uh, Al Jusham, Suraqa ibn Malik, right? And they were worried that if they attacked the Muslims, the tribe of Suraqa would come and attack Mecca. So what happened? Shaytan pretended to be Suraqa. 
is very explicit in the Quran. It's very explicit in the Quran that Shaytan came to them and said, Go forth and fight. You will be victorious. And I am a good friend to you. I'm not going to harm you guys. I'm going to be your protector. Don't worry. You, and of course, he's pretending to be from the other tribe. So Raqqa ibn Malik's tribe. So this gave them confidence and they left Mecca. What does this show? And then, فَلَمَّا تَرَأَتِ الْفِئَتَانِ When Suraqa, quote-unquote, Iblis now, when, quote-unquote, Suraqa saw the Fi'atan, saw the other tribe, and he saw the angel Jibreel come down, and he saw the Mala'ika, he turned around and began to run away. And Abu Jahl stopped him and said, Suraqa, where are you going? You promised you're going to help. And he pushed him so hard that Abu Jahl basically flew in the air. And he goes, Inni akhafullah rabbal alamin. You guys aren't going to win. I'm scared of Allah. And he fled. So Allah mentions this story in the Quran. The point or the shahid is what? That Iblis or a shaitan. Most likely it is the Iblis here. Uh, in fact, it, the hadith mentioned it is Iblis in, in this incident. Uh, whereas in uh, the, the incident of the assassination, it was one shaitan. Uh, but Iblis comes on the day of Badr and runs away. So he comes in the form of a man.